Yeah, hello and how are you? Hey friends, welcome to the Shin Show. I am your host, Shenandoah Briscoe, coming to you from right here in St. Charles, Missouri. Today is Thursday, October the 28th, 2021. Got a happy birthday shout out going out to Linda A. Nash. And so, without further ado, hey Linda, hey, I heard it's your birthday today. So happy birthday, I must say. You know what? Uh, you're one more year older today, so a happy birthday to you, I say. I said, hey, Linda, hey, I heard it's your birthday today. So happy birthday, I must say. You know what? Uh, uh, that's another trip around the sun that you made. So a uh, happy birthday to you today. I said, a happy birthday to you today. Happy birthday there, Linda. Many, many, many more. How about some Shen Show friends? Oh, those are folks that like the Shen Show. Leone Pedereza Fernandez, Daphne Brasher, uh, Mary Ann Williams Briscoe, and Jamie O'Driscoll, and my Pokey Pal, Armanda S. Little. Don't forget to, don't forget to, don't forget to become a Pokey Pal of the Shen Show. It's a Facebook sort of thing. All right, how about, how about, how about, uh, going ahead and doing the weather forecast for the day. Weather forecast for today is brought to you by Refreshing Word Fellowship Christian Church. That's Refreshing Word Fellowship Church, a non-denominational Christian church located at 2054 Campus Drive, St. Charles, Missouri, 63301. Pastored by ordained Pastor John Schumer. We have services at 11 a.m. on Sundays and an hour of power prayer from 1.30 to 2.30 p.m. on Thursdays. Come on in to Refreshing Word Fellowship Church. Alrighty, well, alrighty then. Okie dokie. Hey, let's see what else is going on. weather forecast there we go that's what we were going to do it's 59 degrees out there right now which is kind of chilly or cold if you ask me but anyway uh we're gonna have for the remainder of the day rain most likely low temperatures near 50 degrees fahrenheit winds north to northwest at 10 to 15 miles per hour chances of rain 100 percent and then for tomorrow October the 29th, cloudy with periods of rain, high temperatures of 54 degrees Fahrenheit, winds north to northwest at 10 to 20 miles per hour, chances of rain 80%, rainfall around a quarter of an inch, rain showers early with overcast skies later on at night, low temperatures of 48 degrees Fahrenheit, winds northwest at 10 to 20 miles per hour. Chances of rain, 50%. And then Saturday, uh, October the 30th, cloudy skies with high temperatures around 59 degrees Fahrenheit. Winds northwest at 10 to 15 miles per hour. Partly cloudy skies overnight with low temperatures around 42 degrees Fahrenheit. Winds light and variable west to northwest at about 6 miles per hour. And then for Sunday, uh, October the 31st, partly cloudy skies, highs around 57 degrees Fahrenheit, winds northwest at 10 to 15 miles per hour. Cleared partly cloudy skies overnight with low temperatures of 38 degrees Fahrenheit, winds north to northwest at 5 to 10 miles per hour. And then for Monday, September the 1st, cloudy skies with high temperatures of 51 degrees Fahrenheit. Winds will be north at 5 to 10 miles per hour. And then overcast skies overnight with low temperatures of 38 degrees Fahrenheit. Winds will be light and variable north and northwest at approximately 5 miles per hour. And then for our fifth and final day for our forecast Tuesday October the se uh, September October November November the second Inter intervals of clouds and sunshine high temperatures around 50 
58 degrees Fahrenheit, winds north and northwest at 5 to 10 miles per hour, and then 36 degree, uh, mostly cloudy skies with overnight with 36 degrees Fahrenheit. Winds will be light and variable north to northeast at 4 miles per hour. And that, my friends, is your five day forecast for the St. Charles viewing area. How about those trick or treaters on Maine? Yep, that's right, October the 31st from 3 p.m. to 5 p.m. down on Main Street. On Main Street, ages 12 and younger can go down and your goblins, get your ghouls and goblins out there. Uh, kids that are uh, 12 and under, down on Main Street Historical District from 3 to 5 p.m. So, there you have it. Get on down there. All right, kids, hey, jump up on the couch because it's time for TV story time with TV Grandpa Shenandoah. That's right, Grandpa Shen, going to read to you again. Tonight we're going to do Hansel and Gretel. Now, this is the uh, Brothers Grimm version, so it might be Grimm. <laughs> Once upon a time, a brother and sister named Hansel and Gretel lived in a hut in the woods with their father. Their father was poor woodcutter, and his wife, their mother, had died when the two children were very young. Their father thought he would not be lonely anymore when he finally remarried. But the new stepmother made life very hard for Hansel and Gretel. The children were not allowed to eat until after the stepmother and had taken everything she wanted off the plates. And most of the time, there was only a crust of bread, bread left. And all day long were hard chores for the children to do. Hansel and Gretel tried to tell their father about this, but he would not hear of it. It seemed the only one he would listen to was his wife, and the stepmother talked about was and all the stepmother talked about was how much trouble it was to have children in the hut, and how much she wished they would just go away forever. Well, each day there was less and less food for the boy and girl to eat. The stepmother gave them more and more hard work to do. One day, Gretel begged her father, Please, father, all day long we work hard and we are hungry. But the stepmother slapped her face. You ungrateful brats! She yelled, You will eat us out of house and home. And that night the two children were not allowed to sleep in the hut. Outside, in the cold, they shivered and tried to keep each other warm. Winter was coming, and the clothes they wore were as so thin it felt almost as they had nothing on at all. Now, the next morning, when the sun rose, Gretel turned to her little brother, Hansel, and she said, We cannot stay here. We must escape now, today, in, into the woods. Surely we will find more to eat when we are on our own than what we are getting here at home. Do you think? said Hansel. But what if we get lost? We won't, said Gretel. I will take bread. We will drop bread crumbs behind us, and if we have to, we can follow the crumbs back home. And so the two of them went off into the woods and left their hard life behind them. They went deeper and deeper into the woods, and Gretel was careful to drop one crumb and then, after a bit, another. But alas, they looked and looked for the any sign of the something to eat. An apple tree, a pear tree, some nuts on the ground, or even dried up berries. And there was nothing to eat. They got hungrier and hungrier. And at last poor Hansel and Gretel knew they must return to their hard 
uh, hut, to their hut, or they would surely starve. Well, they would just need to find the breadcrumbs, and that would lead them home. Yet when they looked for breadcrumbs, there were none to be found. All the breadcrumbs were gone. A bird whooshed up into the air, and in its beak was a large crumb. Hansel and Gretel were struck with grief. The birds must have taken them all. A wolf howled in the distance. The sun was setting. Hansel and Gretel were lost and hungry. Now they would were scared, too. Well, Gretel, whispered Hansel in fear, what will we do? She did not know what to say. All she could do was to hug her little brother. Each minute it was getting darker and darker. Again a wolf howled in the distance. All of a sudden Gretel saw a small light shining far away. Could it be someone's hut this deep into the woods? Well, we must find out, cried Gretel, and maybe whoever lives there is kind and will take us in. Well, the two children sped as fast as they could to the light. And when they got closer, they could not believe their eyes. If you can imagine, from top to bottom, the hut was made of all of candy. From its gingerbread roof, with frosting all over it in the walls, and with their candies tucked into the frosting, what a sight to see! Gretel, Hansel cried, before Gretel could say, I bet it would be okay if we just take a little taste. And both of them were already biting off small chunks and licking the sweet candies. A sharp voice, Who is nibbling on my house? Hansel and Gretel spun around an old witch. Done, Gre Gretel could only curtsy. If you please, ma'am, uh, she said as sweetly as she could. There was so much candy on your house, and we are so hungry. You have the right. You have that right. My house, snapped the witch. Her voice dropped. Well, then. Mm. said the witch in a gentler tone. Come inside, and I'll get something for you to eat. Well, Hansel and Gretel looked at each other in delight, so they skipped into the witch's hut. A fine meal of soup and bread, as they licked in the last crust of bread and looked around the hut, what? the brother and sister saw made their hearts turn cold. Piles and piles of bones in the corners, and yet the two children were very tired, and so they slept. The next morning when they woke, Hansel found himself locked in a cage, and the witch roared, That's where you, uh, your brother, will stay. Every day I will fatten him up, and soon... He will make me a fine dinner. She laughed, <laughs> rubbing her hands with glee. Until then, she said sharply to Gretel, You will work for me. Indeed, Hansel was well fed, and Gretel worked hard all day long doing chores for the witch. Each morning, the witch would said to the boy, Show me your finger. I will feel how plump you are getting. For the old witch could not see very well. And Hansel held out his finger as he was told. Well, the witch smiled when she felt how plump he was getting. And Gretel, Hansel whispered in fear, What are we to do? Soon I will be plump enough and the witch will want to eat me. His sister wished she had a plan, but could not think of one that uh, at that time.
And then one night, when the witch was sleeping, Gretel had an idea. She picked up a bone from one of the piles of the, on the floor and woke her brother Hansel and said, The next time the witch asks you to see her finger, hold out this bone to her instead. Well, the next morning he did just that. Hmph, said the witch, touching the bone and th thinking it was the boy's finger. This is going to take longer than I thought. Well, eh, at least I have more time, Gretel thought. But still, she could not think of any way they could get out of there. Well, each morning when the witch said, Show me your finger, Hansel held out the bone. And one day the witch yelled, I will not wait any another day. The boy will be my dinner tonight, no matter how skinny he is. Well, the witch ordered Gretel to start the fire in the oven at once. She must get it very hot. Gretel worked as slowly as she could. <laughs> Why was the witch looking at her with such a sly smile? Be a dear, said the witch with a slow grin. Go inside the oven, monkey, and tell me if it is hot enough. Well, Gretel's heart skipped a beat. If she did that, the witch could push her inside, and she would eat them both. And she looked down. I'm not sure how to, to tell. Nonsense, said the witch. Nothing could be easier. Just go in. Um, said Gretel slowly. Please show me first. Stupid girl, snapped the witch. Mumbling and grumbling, she stepped into the oven. The moment the witch was inside, Gretel quickly slammed the door. Gretel, Hansel cried out, you saved us. Well, this, this sister tried to think fast. Where is the key for your cage? She looked and she looked, and at last she found it at the bottom of a vase, and she freed her brother from the cage right away. Then she went back to the vase, for what had she felt under the key? Why, the vase had precious jewels inside. Well, with their pockets filled with the jewels, they ran outside as fast as they could. In the daylight, they soon found a small path and followed it. It led to a wider path that led to a road. They waited by the roadside, hoping someone would ride by. When a horseman trotted up, Hansel and Gretel waved their hands. And when the horseman stopped, the children offered one of the small jewels, and the horseman was happy to give them a ride home. When the brother and the sister opened the door to their house, their father was will wild with joy to see them. He had worried and looked for them night and day since they had vanished. They learned their stepmother died very soon after they left. For many years to come, Hansel and Gretel lived happily ever after with their father in the hut in the woods. And that, my friends, was TV Grandpa's story time. Okay, alrighty then. Hey, um, let's move on into the Daily Bread portion of the program. Daily Bread portion of the program uh, is brought to you today by The Bible with Briscoe 2021. The Bible with Briscoe 2021 is a daily reading of the Bible to be completed within one year. Don't forget to tune in to The Bible with Briscoe 2021 for your daily reading. Today's reading in the Bible with Briscoe 2021 will be Jeremiah 15 through 17 and 2 Timothy 2. So that is the Bible with Briscoe 2021 for your daily reading of the Bible. Alrighty, let's see here. Daily bread portion of the program. Today's devotion in the daily bread is, Is God Listening? 
does God listen? Well, we know he does. And we're going to find that out by reading today's scripture and insights, 1 John 5, 13 through 15. I write these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God, so that you may know that you have eternal life. This is the confidence we have in approaching God, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have what we asked him, asked of him. We know that we have what we asked of him. There you go. John 5, 13 through 15. And that was it. If we know him and we love him and we know that he loves us, if we ask him, he will provide us. And that's pretty much it in the nutshell. Alrighty, hey, that's today the very portion of the program, which uh, is the conclusion of the Shin Show. Which means we've got one song for you tonight, and that would be Oh, well, goodbye, my friends. It's uh, time to go. <laughs> I said goodbye, my friends. It's uh, time to go. <laughs> I hate to leave you, but I really must go. <laughs> so goodbye, my friends. Goodbye. <laughs> goodbye, my friends. Goodbye. This here has been Shenandoah Briscoe saying hello and how are you. Thanks for tuning in to the Shen Show. And as always, you know, God loves you and so do I. So... Come back and see me tomorrow, because, well, hey, we'll be here, and we hope that you are, too.